The Empire is the most powerful entity in the galaxy, with planet-destroying technology at their fingertips. And yet, when they lose a pair of droids in the desert, they have stormtroopers riding around on giant lizards? Why? I don't think we're allowed to discuss that. One of the things that made Star Wars stand out so much when it came out was just how busy and full the worlds were. At any given moment in the background of any scene, there could be a dozen or so other things going on just being part of their own world. While the real reason almost any of these kinds of things exist is because George Lucas or someone involved in production thought they'd look cool, Star Wars has proven to be a tapestry that can be endlessly expanded. Even the Count Chocula looking guy at the cantina eventually gets a history for not only him, but his entire species. Take all the time you need. Luke's lightsaber went from blue to green because in Return of the Jedi, he'd spend the first third of the movie waving it in front of a blue sky, so green would be easier to track. This rather practical production decision has evolved into a rigid set of meanings for the various colors of lightsabers. Is that so? Keeping with that theme, there's both a practical production reason that stormtroopers are milling about in the background of the search for R2-D2 and C-3PO on dewbacks, because it looked cool, and a solid in-universe reason that stormtroopers would be using pack animals instead of speeders. Whether it's Luke Skywalker's X-34 land speeder or the speeder bikes first seen in Return of the Jedi, fast-moving hover vehicles seem to be the way to get around in a galaxy far, far away. Terrain is no longer a problem as long as you practice the George of the Jungle principle. Watch out for that tree. Given the amount of ground that has to be covered in their search for the missing droids and Death Star plans, it seems like speeders would be the weapon of choice when it came to getting around on Tatooine. The reason why they might not do that actually is written all over Luke's X-34, and the plans he had before cleaning the new droids disrupted them. Lucas's hot rod youth obsession is reflected all over the sleek but battered convertible his young hero used as his main ride. There are panels missing or mismatched, and there's evidence all over the landspeeder of both desert wear and tear and Mickey Mouse make do repairs. All of this was laid out in Luke's father's unfairly maligned line from Attack of the Clones. Sand does get everywhere, and it is coarse, rough, and irritating. And if you live amongst a lot of it, that can get old super fast. Spending a lifetime of breathing it, or having it mixed with the salt from your evaporated sweat in your skin, helping to dry that out even faster, leading to little red cracks, or the sand getting in between any set of gears or moving pieces, or becoming part of any exposed liquid, is enough to make you want to tweak the nose of the next person who tries to dismiss it as a dry heat. On the desert planet of Tatooine, when they have limited time to find those droids before the plans fall into the wrong hands, the Imperial Troopers might not have the time or manpower to constantly stop and blow out the intakes of a traditional speeder. Luke has been wrenching and modifying his speeder just to keep it in decent enough shape to commute to the Tashi Station to get the parts he needs to keep it going. Sometimes, you just can't out-technology nature. While surplus Toyotas have proven to be more than capable of scurrying about the deserts of the Middle East and Sub-Saharan Africa, often the best way to get around is the tried and true way, by using camels as pack animals. Yeah. Sure, they're kind of unruly and will let you know exactly how they feel about you via spitting and biting, but they are perfect for crossing the desert with little hassle thanks to their ability to store water over long periods of time. Will you just hurry up? Thanks to the desert being their natural habitat, they have feet literally designed for stability in the shifting sandy terrain. This is an advantage that the Dubak shares. As a cold-blooded animal, it's better suited for the arid landscape of Tatooine and its dual suns. It gets its name from the dew that collects on their back overnight when their metabolism slows down and they group together to keep the blood flowing. In the morning, they'll use their long tongues to extract the dew as a source of moisture. While the Empire might bring food and water to keep their steeds alive, being in their indigenous surroundings means they're intrinsically built to survive the environment. Very well. This is the same thing as the Tauntaun. Unlike the Speeders, the Tauntaun doesn't need to be prepared to run around in the snow. In that case, it does mean be home by sunset is a hard and fast rule because even Tauntauns can't handle overnight lows. But as long as you follow the rule, you're fairly golden. There's a final reason that the Empire would go lo-fi. Indulge me if you will. They didn't want to give away their presence lest someone know that they're after something valuable or sensitive. After all, Tatooine is home to the biggest hive of scum and villainy in the galaxy. Even if there wasn't a former Jedi general and future face of the Rebellion on world, there are plenty of pirates and gangsters who would be more than happy to broker sensitive Empire information, especially the design schematics of their new superweapon. That's why when they slaughtered the Jawas, Uncle Owen, and Aunt Beru, they tried to make it look like sand people by riding in on Banthas, the preferred ride of the Tusken Raiders. How a woolly ram the size of an Asian elephant survives in the desert is a whole other story. If they're milling about on indigenous creatures, it's less obvious they were there and responsible for the destruction. Unless, of course, you're with someone who knows how the sand people ride, 
which would probably be a lot. But it's the thought that counts. Dewbacks are also better suited for detecting danger in the environment. While Stormtrooper armor might not pick up on lurking Tusken Raiders, a Dewback might. Given that Tusken Raiders like taking pot shots at speeders and pod racers, a little extra heads up can come in handy. With Star Wars figures predating small G.I. Joe and their multiple points of articulation, in order for stiff-legged stormtroopers to ride the Dewback toy, they'd push through a spring-loaded hatch on the Dewback's back, making them look like a weird lizard centaur. I can't be the only one who tried to fit the whole guy inside. Whoa, bones, I had no idea. 